Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a sort of a winter inspired soap. I have some little rosette flowers left over from some soap frosting that I used in an earlier video uh, making peppermint candy soap. And so I had those little rosettes and I was thinking what to do. We're coming into fall and winter here at the time of filming this. And I have this wonderful fragrance from Brambleberry called Cranberry Fig. And um, it, just, it smells good and it sort of went with the mintiness. This doesn't, the cranberry fig doesn't have any mint, but it sort of went with the little minty rosette flowers I had. So it made me think I'm calling this soap Winter Bloom because of the flowers on top. And I'm gonna be using the cranberry fig in the base of it. And for my color, I'm not gonna color the bulk of the soap. I wanna do like a mica line is what I intended. I'm actually filming this intro after I made this soap yesterday. Um, and I had a breakthrough, so I ended up swirling with a hanger, but I'm using this apple moss green, and it's really pretty. And so that is swirled in the soap, as well as I used a leaf tip on my piping bag and did little leaves around the rosettes. So that's what I'm doing for the soap. Uh, I also used organic aloe vera juice for the liquid portion with Tussa silk fibers. So um, let's get right into it and see this winter bloom soap. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe. And I'm also on Instagram and Facebook if you want more up-to-date soaping inspiration and what I'm doing in the soap studio between videos, check that out too. And what I'm going to do today is my heat transfer method. I have in here is my aloe vera, organic aloe vera juice and Tussa silk fibers and a little uh, distilled water to bring it up to the measure that I want, but mostly aloe vera juice. And here is my lye, I'm, and let me just show you. I've got all my liquid oils here with the organic colloidal oats and kale and clay already blended in. Here are my hard oils and butters. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my lye into my aloe vera juice with the silk fibers. And as soon as all the grit is dissolved, I'm gonna go ahead and put it over my hard oils for the heat transfer method. Um, and using my little peppermint rosettes that I had left over from my peppermint candy soap, I'll show you those in a minute. I had some extra soap frosting, so I just piped them onto wax paper and uh, I wanted to use them on a soap. And today I'm going to be doing um, soap piping leaves. It's my first time doing that. So you'll get to <laughs> watch me muscle through that first attempt. There we go. This is all dissolved in. The silk is dissolved. The lye is all dissolved. And I'm going to go ahead and pour it over my hard oils here. stir this around to help those hard oils along and butters I've got cocoa butter in there uh, organic coconut oil and organic sustainable palm those are my hard oils well those are melting I'll show you my little rosettes here that I had left over so um, after I pour my soap, we're gonna put these on the top and I'm gonna pipe little leaves, hopefully. That's the goal, we're gonna pipe some leaves around there. Also, my stick blender died, so I went up to my kitchen and got this old vintage rival stick blender. So that's what I'm using today, it's a little short. I've ordered a new one on Amazon, but um, so working with what I've got today. Just hop over here and try to break these up with my little stick blender if I can. Alright, pull that out. And I'm going to go ahead and add my liquid oils now. I think I've got all my hard oils melted. There we 
go. Stirred around here. It's nice and warm. It's so strange. This heat transfer method is so different than what um, than what I've been taught and what I assumed. You know, I'm just hoping at cool temperatures and all that. But um, I know several really seasoned and excellent soapers that use this method pretty much all the time. I, I only use it occasionally because it's fun sometimes to mix things up. Um, Jen from a n Suds and Such does the heat transfer method almost exclusively and she's fabulous. Her soaps are gorgeous. All right, so that is emulsified and uh, ready to add my fragrance. I'm not going to add any color to the base here except um, my mica lines until I get to the top. Very basic again. So it's my cranberry fig, and I think I'm gonna call this winter blossom or winter bloom or something because of my little rosettes. So I measured that out, I had a little off. So I'm gonna add this in, and it says that it can cause mild acceleration. I'm hoping that that is not the case, but we will see. I'm going to pull my spatula out and stick blend, or not stick blend, whisk. To try and get this nice and incorporated. Maybe I'll stick blend for just a sec with my trusty old, this thing is vintage. <laughs> but you know what? It's hanging in there. <laughs> I actually read some reviews of people that like these because they have a shallower bell and they don't get as much air trapped up in there. So um, you don't get air bubbles as much and I'm actually finding that to be true. All right, that is well and emulsified. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour my first base layer here. Just a nice little amount. I don't know how many layers I'm even going to do, but we'll know when we get there. Bought my beautiful apple moss green mica all over here. that set up for a bit. This is setting up pretty quickly, so we're going to go ahead and break the fall here. Even though it breaks, it might break through. There we go. It's going to break through, but that's okay. We're going to just kind of, actually, you know what? Let's just swirl it, and that'll be cool. We're taking this as it comes. There we go. Now, We'll just add some more mica line here and do one more pour and then um, and then we'll go ahead and add on our rosettes because I want them on when it's still pretty liquidy so they'll stick really well and then the rest of this I'm going to mix the mica the green color in for my leaves so let's go ahead and choppy chop that I think that's looking pretty good. There we go. All right. Now, before I put my rosettes on, I've got to add my green mica to the leftover here for my frosting. We're just going to sort of smush that around so I can get it in the piping bag for the leaves. There we go. I'm going to put that in the piping bag and just set it off to the side. And I've got a little extra here that I think I'm going to go ahead and drizzle around the top. Kind of making this up as we go, but that's all right. I 
wonder. That's not too thick. I might run my hanger through there. There we go. I'm going to swizzle it like that. And then, let's see. Hanger here. Got to get it bent to the right depth. There we go. And I'm just going to chop up and down a little and kind of come along. There we go. Now let me bang this on the ground and then we'll get our little rosettes up on top. Here's our pretty rosettes. And I'm just going to try to sink these down in as best I can. So now it's time for my leaves. All right, back the next day with my winter bloom here. Let's get it out of the mold and see how that uh, mica line that became a mica swirl on the inside, how that all came up. We ended up just hanger swirling it because it uh, kind of went sideways on me, but we will see. see I tried to do a mica line and I poured and it broke through but it was getting thick and I sort of had to move so it kind of went all sideways on me but that's still a really lovely bar and the rosettes came out really pretty so not disappointed smells great I'm going to show you what I do when I have tiny little air pockets like that is when I shave the corners of the bar so we'll do that right here I 
All right. All these little shavings, you take one, and this is the next day, so this is very pliable still, like a little dough, and you make a little dough out of the color, and I kind of roll it and make it pointy. Let's see if you can see, and then I just stuff it in the hole, smash it, and pull with my finger. And you can do that as many times as you need to get it filled in. There, no hole. Let's see, there's this side has a little hole. And smash it in there and just clear off the excess. No hole. And the color will sort of, as this cures out, that's just gonna fade out to uh, nothing. You won't even notice it. I'll see if I can find another one here to show you.